Campbell, welcome to Nashville Meets World. Um, I get to hold up stuff today because <laughs> that's my favorite thing. Don't laugh yet. Uh, this CD by Deborah Allen called Hear Me Now. This CD by Deborah Allen, which is called Rockin' Little Christmas. And this out book by Deborah Allen called The Loneliest Christmas Tree. And uh, by sheer coincidence, we have Deborah Allen. It's so good to meet you, Cameron. How, how did you wind up with all that good stuff? Uh, some chick gave it. <laughs> it just happened to have it in my purse. Some chick says, here, I have stuff for you. And the next one, I get to hold stuff up. Thank you for being here. This is a real pleasure. Thank it's you. I love your studio. It's awesome. Thank you. Um, you have kind of a, well, jump right into stuff here. You have kind of a big deal happening for you on October 15th. Thank celebrating 40 years in country music. What did you start when you were three? Yeah, <laughs> no, I started actually before I was born. That, but that's another. <laughs> I'm serious. That's another story. There. That's another story. But um, it is a true story. But no, I've just been doing it for a long time. Actually, if you you know if you really count when I started back in Memphis, I started with George Klein. You know, yeah. back when I was 16 years old, and I came to Nashville and wound up going to Russia with Tennessee Ernie Ford in 1974. That's where you go, 1974. I can't remember when it was, but anyway, yeah, um, I did my Jim Reeves recordings, which was the very first time that that kind of technology was used to right. overdub voices. And uh, so I, I just couldn't believe that I had the opportunity to sing with such a great singer. And it was all by chance. You know, I've been hanging out with some of my friends up at Tree Publishing, and uh, they were throwing a big number one party. Yeah. And as you know, in Nashville, when you're at a number one party or any party, yeah. someone's liable to pick up a guitar. So they called them guitar pullings back yeah. then. Have you ever heard of guitar pullings? Yeah, I have. That's, that's what we call some it. Some places still... Uh, we'll call them guitar pills. Not, yeah. not so much here, but yeah. I hear different places around the world will call yeah. them guitar pills. Still. That's what we called them back yeah. then. So we're, so at the end of the night, they were passing around the guitar, and I sang a couple of songs, and I didn't think a thing about it. But the next day, Bud Logan, who produced all those original recordings yeah. on uh, Jim Reeves, he played bass in wow. his band, too. He said, we're going to do some duets with Jim Reeves. I said, we want you, and we think your voice would be good for it. And I'm like, Wait a minute, Jim Reeves, the guy that sang, put your sweet lips a little closer yeah. to the phone. He goes, yeah. I said, isn't he no longer with us? And he said, yeah, but we're going to use this new technology. So we really were the first to do that. And then after that, of course, Natalie Cole and her dad did the yeah. famous Hank. ones. Yeah, Hank, Hank, Jr., Hank Jr., yeah. yeah. It's really become kind of a lot more normal, but back then it was really yeah. different. Uh, but the, the thing on the 15th is celebrating your 40, the, the governor, now the governor has already made a declaration. Yes, uh, Governor Bill Lee, that blew my mind. Yeah. I, I heard y'all talking about uh, Third and Lindsley yeah. just a minute ago. We were having a huge um, performance with all kinds of incredible artists. Crystal Gale, Larry Gatlin, T.G. Shepard and Kelly Lang were, were hosting it. Uh, John Barry, just an amazing lineup. And so, you know, you know how those things go. They can yeah. run behind. So I was like... Yeah, because everybody talks. It's, like, it's like visiting. I know. You know, I know. We've got company over. So yeah. I was going to go out and just sing my two songs real quick and get off the stage to kind of help keep the show. Yeah. So I sang my songs, and I was about to step off and go, wait a minute, T.G. and Kelly, like, wait a minute, Deborah, don't go. And I go, okay. You know, and they said, we've got something for you. And then the, the next thing you know, Devin O'Day comes walking up on stage Whoa. with this huge proclamation from Governor Bill Lee. And I was just like, I can't believe this. And it's funny, uh, when Devin handed it, well, she hadn't handed it to me yet. When she was reading it, just before she handed it to me, she started just methodically reading what they had written out on the proclamation. And it was just kind of coming over me like a wave. I was like, gosh, I can't believe that much life has been lived so far. I can't believe is this. Is, I can't believe this is about me. It kind of, and I got choked up. I couldn't believe it. They, they really got me because I was not expecting that at all. I'm a little more prepared for the one in Memphis yeah. with Mayor Strickland and the city council. 
But that means so much to me because that is my hometown. It's your hometown, and yes. that's where your show really took root. It you did. Know. It did. Uh, I grew up listening to uh, all kinds of really nice mix of music in that in the, in Memphis. Uh, of course, the R and B, rock and roll. Yeah, I mean, my mother when I was just a little kid, she would always say, "Hey, remember, you're from Memphis." the home of the blues, the king of rock and roll. You know, so that just kind of seeped down in my soul. And my father was an automobile upholsterer, and uh, Willie Mitchell, who wound up recording um, Tina Turner uh, later on in life, and Al Green, you know, he, he worked at another seat cover place down the, the street, and he was in and out of my daddy's shop all the time. And, so I listened to WDIA a lot. I listened to a lot of R&B, and then we passed by Elvis's house all the time. We'd see him out on the lake <laughs> with, my mother said, there's Elvis out there. I believe he's out there with that old way and Margaret. <laughs> so if my mother loves you, she always puts O in front of it. Okay. Like that old, she loves yeah. Delbert McClinton. Yeah. She'll go, I love that old Delbert McClinton. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, and then on Saturdays, you know, we always watched the country uh, television shows yeah. like with the Louie Brothers, Porter and Dolly yeah. and, and all of those great. So, you know, it's just been an incredible um, pot of different styles of music. And, and I think that's kind of defined who you are, not just musically, but you are a Renaissance woman. You're a singer, a songwriter, you host a serious mm -hmm. you're on serious radio um and an author you do a little bit of everything thank you um you know i just love to be creative that's when i'm in my happy that's in, that's when i'm in my sweet spot really just when i when i allow myself to relax and just kind of let things come to me and um the book actually the christmas book that you're referring to about me being an author i feel like you know, it was my pen and my, and it came through me, but I just really feel like it was a gift from God because yeah. I never sat down and went, I'm going to write a book. No, what happened, the way it happened was I had a big, big pad of paper and I'd gotten this calligraphy pen. And I thought, <laughs> let's see what this looks like. And, I, and I, I don't know why, but I wrote, The Loneliest Christmas Tree. And I went, well, that sounds like a story. I wonder what it's about. And every day I would just, I, so I started off once upon a time. And then I wrote on it all day long. And then at the end of the day, I was like, I don't know what happens next. Oh, well, I'll go to sleep. The next day I'd wake up and it'd be like, oh, I know what happens next. And uh, it's the reason I say it was a gift from God is because, um, because of that, because the way that it was written, and the way that it came to me, it was written in four days. Each day I would find out what happened next. And then the other thing is my friend, um, Kix Brooks, he and I were writing one afternoon. And, and I mean, I'd had this book for a long time and I hadn't even thought about it for a while. But I just said, after we wrote a couple of songs that day, I said, say, hey, how are the kids doing? And he goes, he told me about his son. And then he goes, have you ever seen any of Molly's illustrations or any of her artwork? And I said, no. I haven't. I didn't even know she did that. And he goes, y'all check it out. She's awesome. So I checked her out. And I thought, well, maybe she, a little light bulb goes off. And I go, maybe she should illustrate my book. Because a lot of publishers yeah. always want an illustrator. Yeah. So, and sometimes they'll pick one that doesn't necessarily match up. Match yeah. So I called up um, Molly and asked her if I could read it. And she said, sure, come on over. So I read it to her. And she's really, really, really cute. She's very quirky. And uh, so when I would read her the book, she would go, <laughs> like she was responding to the book. And at the end of it, she says, Deborah, when did you write this book? And I go, Molly, I'm embarrassed to tell you, I wrote this book in 1986. She goes, oh, that's the year that I was born. Yeah. I said, wow. And she goes, and guess what day I was born on? I said, what? And she said, uh, I was born on Christmas Eve. I said, Molly, I remember that. The whole town remembers that. It was a really big deal. Kix and Barbara just had their little baby girl and her name's Molly. I said, oh my gosh, you've got to. Well, you don't have to, but I would love it if you would 
illustrate my book. So that came together, you know, after several years of uh, presenting it to publishers. And I even had one publisher say, well, they were always saying you need to get it illustrated. And then the other thing they'd say is, well, well, one of them said, well, we love your book, but we don't like the, the, uh, the hero in the book. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, since this book was a gift from God, I think I'll just leave it the way it is. So it never got published forever. Wow. But, but the lady that is the hero in the book, and like I said, I didn't even know she was going to be the hero in the book, but it was based on a lady I had met here in Nashville and befriended. And uh, I didn't even know that she was going to be the, the hero. I just love life because of that. You know, I love life because you never know where it's going to take you next. This, this is... Oh, look. Oh, look. Take, 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 take. There we go. There we go. Oh, hang those there. Uh, okay. But, yeah, I mean, just flipping the page, I mean, the illustrations are absolutely brilliant. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, Molly's, Molly's done a She has. Thing. She has done an incredible book. So if you have kids, what kind of age are we looking at? Probably? Well, a lot of people say it's a chill. It's a, because of the, the language in the book, that I, the way that I wrote it, um, a lot of people say it's a children's book, but it's really a children's book that adults can enjoy as well. So children of any age, uh, you can be mature, immature, anything. Uh, I just wanted to show you something. Remember I told you about the uh, the pad that I got? Yeah. Okay, this is like what it looked like when I first started writing the book. That's how I wrote it. Wow. Uh, it that's how I did it. And so when I got together with Molly, I said, Molly, I don't know what to say except that on the title page, just if you can make sure you make the yeah, Christmas cool. tree have the title inside the tree. Nice. And so she did that. That's really great. Yeah. Um, so get that for kids, grandkids, great grandkids, or just yourself. The Loneliest Christmas Tree, uh, Deborah Allen, with illustrations by Molly Brooks, Kate Brooks' daughter. Yeah, and if you want to get it, you can get it from my website, DeborahAllen.com, because I love it when people buy it through there, because I can actually autograph yeah. it, personalize it for Christmas and stuff. Me, and that's coming up closer than we all want it to. It, it, it <laughs> is. It is. So, um... You've got music out as well, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and this is this is the latest album. The, uh, yeah, the Hear Me Now Hear is me my now. is my latest album. And uh, speaking of Elvis, one of my favorite songs on here. I'm not going to sing it today, but it's uh, called Amazing Graceland. <laughs> and it better be big. Oh my gosh, that song <laughs> is that's a fun song to sing. Um, but you, go ahead. You, sorry, you are timeless because you don't seem to have aged since when I first started hearing you when I first started in radio back in the early 80s. Thank you. Uh, your voice is still killer like it was back then. And you know, as hard as you get older, they, a lot of them still have to uh, have to drop and you know drop things a step or two. Have you ever found you had to do that much? Not a whole lot. I didn't think so. Not a whole lot. Actually, uh, it was funny because you see, I recorded um, "Rock Me" in G flat, but a lot of times when I go out on the road, just to make it easier for the band, I just go ahead and sing it in G. Yeah. And one of my band members said, "You know, most people drop their keys, but like you're raising your keys." <laughs> then I thought about it, and I thought, like, "You know what? I'm going to put it back in the original key because <laughs> it's warmer." Uh, speaking of rock me. Let's watch the video. Oh, okay. Let's do it. Here it is. Rock me. Right. Deborah Ellen. So, a uh, great video for Thank Rock Me. Thank you. Uh, is that it fun doing those things? Yeah, it is fun doing those things. And um, I love it. That particular one, you know, what is the definition of a Renaissance woman, actually? Uh, the, the Renaissance term is, is meaning that you know and can converse or do a lot of different things. Okay. That's what well, I've learned it along the way. And um, so 
I wanted to buy a film camera back then. Mm -hmm. This was in like 1993. Actually, I bought the camera probably around in 1991. But I, I'm a list person. I put things on lists. So I had these two pages like of things to do, goals I wanted to do. And one of them was buy a 60 millimeter Airflex SR film camera. It was on my list forever. And one day I just woke up and stopped my foot on the floor and went, are you going to buy a camera or are you just saying you're going to buy a camera? I thought, I am buying a camera. So not only do you talk to yourself, but you answer yourself. I did, eventually. Yeah. yeah. So I get, in, I get in the phone book and I start looking up advertisers because I was trying to find out where I could, you know, I figured an advertiser, you know, someone yeah. who does commercials would know uh, where I could get one. The first one I called just happened to have a pack, package for sale, but it was a whole lot more than I wanted to spend because it was not just the camera, it was the all the accessories that went with it and their package was like $30,000 over. I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but I did, I, I borrowed it and I got it and and then I thought, hey, I'm gonna call up my good friend Lou Shinatri who shoots commercials and I call up Lou and I say, hey Lou, do you shoot your commercials in film or video? And he goes, oh, nobody can afford film. I always do video. And I said, hey, I just bought a new film camera. Why don't you be my broker? You broker my camera, you know, out for me. It'll help pay for the camera and give your, your, your product will be really good. Yeah. You know, it was a win, win, win thing. So at the end of the year, he calls me, no, I call him up and I say, Lou, I'm getting ready to start shooting videos with my camera. So I'm taking it off the market. He goes, no, no, don't do it. I'm about to get married. I, I want to keep renting it out. I go, Lou, you just bought me a camera. You know, <laughs> off of 10% was his fee. Yeah. I said, if you kept all the money, just think how much more you would make. And he goes, Okay, but I don't. I just think the timing's bad. And I, th I said, I think the timing's good. So later on, he told me how good the timing was. But back to the story on the video. So I had my own camera, and I had this song, and I had this idea that I wanted to do it uh, partially in Memphis, but also on the other side in Arkansas, in that low delta land. And I just remember walking across the. Uh, you know, you're asking me if it was fun. It's always fun to be creative, like. Yeah. Uh, like uh, the night before we were painting the rocking chair hot pink in the middle of the street, you know, <laughs> and all of that fun stuff. But I remember walking across that cotton field thing with my camera in my hand going, someday I am not going to have to carry my own camera to my own video <laughs> shoot, you know. And uh, all those, the aerial shots just yeah. happened by chance. Uh, we were driving down the street and I saw uh, a barn with like, uh, you know, it's just like a lawnmower yeah. thing with wings. I forgot, an ultralight, yeah. an ultralight. So we asked the guy, could it we? It is really just a lawnmower thing uh, with wings. It is. So we were like, could we, uh, would you rent that out? And he goes, no, no, not this one, but down the street there's a two seater. Yeah. And it was so bumpy, the film footage was so bumpy, the only way to use it was to slow it down yeah. and just use a little few seconds, but just the few seconds that we had it made it look like we had this huge expensive budget. Nice. Yeah, yeah you, I don't know why they invent two seaters because the people that are crazy enough to fly those things should only fly them. There's no way you would get me up in one of those things. Exactly. Yeah, and um, you know, it's just, I like making things up as you go along. My parents were there that day, which was a great memory and uh, had that dress on and that hat and that hat box. And I was walking across the field and I hear my mother go, swing it around, Deborah. <laughs> oh, good idea. You know, like that. that. Yeah, so it was so much fun. And then, and then another, and then I won't talk about this video anymore, but uh, I was, this truck drove by and it was this farmer type guy. He had his arm out the window and he goes, uh, that's my field out there. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I start walking over. I said, I'm so sorry. I said, uh, we're just shooting a video. I hope I'm not disturbing anything. He goes, oh, I'm not worried about disturbing anything. He goes, but you know, on a hot day like today, those water moccasins like to get up in there and cool <laughs> off. Like, oh my gosh. I did, it did cross my mind when I stepped into the cotton field and went, what if there's any snakes in here? Oh, well, show business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, snakes, though. No. 
I don't mind. I, I, you, I touched the constrictors. I don't mind those those snakes, but venomous mm -hmm. ones freak me out. Uh, yeah, water moccasins, rattlesnakes. I don't oh, yeah. anything near anywhere near anything that bites. But the constrictors, they're they're a panic. Yeah, but that's still scary to me. And when they die, they make great boots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't had a pair. Of, my husband has a pair of those, but he's always got cool boots. How do you take downtime? Because it seems like you're very busy. The radio show, you have a, a lot of fun doing that radio show. Yeah, I did that. I did that for three years. Yeah. I'm not doing that that's right now. And I really love doing it because just like what we're doing today, yeah. You know, I would, I, I uh, took it upon myself to invite my friends. You know, I didn't want to just be playing song after song. So yeah. once a week, I would always invite a special guest. And I had some amazing special guests that were friends of mine. And yeah. I thought I knew them. But as I got to talking to them, I would always find out so much more about them than I knew. So I really, really enjoyed that. But I'm also, you know, like I said, I really love to be creative, so it's just nice to be able to focus on my music, too. You should come back and co-host the show with me sometime. I would love to. I would we ever do that? <laughs> Who would we get? Figure something out. Who could we get? Oh, we could. The list is endless. Yeah. We'll yeah. figure it out. Okay. You want to do a song, because we've been talking about music and all your creative we stuff. Can you show the video. Of it. Let's get a, let's get a Deborah Allen vocal. Oh, my. That's a pretty guitar. Thank you. This is the uh, Gibson 100th anniversary uh, guitar for Gibson. Yeah. Uh, my friend Larry English invited me to the NAMM show one day. He said they were going to give me a present, or he was going to give me a present from Gibson. And he gave me this book mm -hmm. about the history of Gibson. Uh, and it was probably a $100 book. Yeah. And I thought, oh, God, Larry, thank you so much. He goes, let's walk around and look at some stuff. So I walked <laughs> around the corner, and they had these three guitars hanging on the wall. Two of them were real red, white, and blue on the yeah. sand. And then there was this one. I went, oh, my gosh, I love that guitar. And he goes, which one? I went, that one right there with a the big red flower on it. He goes, you like it? And I went, well, who wouldn't like it? I love that guitar. He goes, it's yours. Wow. So. Nice. Yeah, this song is off of my Hear Me Now album, and um, it's one that I love to sing because um, I don't know why. It's just at the end of a show, and I'll sing the song. I have a lot of people come up and pour their heart out to me, and that means a lot to me. his kiss warm on my lips feel the fire in his touch and the love that I miss hear those three little words each time he said goodbye it's like he always knew what I now realize. There's a last time for everything. A tomorrow that never comes. A moment you never dreamed could leave so many dreams undone. One thing in life is certain It's not as certain as it seems So while there's blue sky above you Take the time to say I love you Cause there's a last time for everything The days we are given Precious and few 
savor each sunrise, whatever you do. And don't let the sun set on the slightest tree bed. Make beautiful memories and never forget. There's a last time for everything, a tomorrow that never comes. A moment you never dreamed Could leave so many dreams undone One thing in life is certain It's not as certain as it seems So while there's blue sky above you Take the time to say I love you Cause there's a last time for everything. One thing in life is certain It's not a certain as it seems So while there's blue sky above you Take the time to say I love you Cause there's a last time Wow, <laughs> I was just totally lost there. Thank Great you. song. Thank you. Deborah Allen on uh, National Meets World. Man, it's just so cool having you here. It, it's, it's nice you talk about who would we get, and you talk about your serious show. And, how you invite friends yeah. on. It, that's kind of the coolest thing, and I love doing this show, is being able to get friends and people that I've admired over the years in the entertainment business, and so cool having you here. Well, it's great. so wonderful to be here. I've really been looking forward to it. You, you have a great show. You're reaching a lot of people and, and you know, keeping the music out there. and. And so it's just really good to get to know you too. And I'm too. honored that you've been following my music since oh, the yeah. 80s. So thank yeah. you. Baby, I'm a lot. And, and you still have that Memphis soul sound in your voice. It's just a natural thing. Oh, you just made me think of something. Can right. I tell you about a project? Absolutely. Okay, I'm so excited about this project I'm involved in. It's called TAPS. It's a great foundation. It's Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors. And a lot of great songwriters got together to write songs with the survivors of fallen soldiers. Wow. And my good friend, um, Frank Myers and Jimmy Nichols mm -hmm. are partnering on that. And, and I've, I've already written my song uh, with the mother and son and daughter of a fallen soldier, along with my great friend, amazing songwriter too, uh, Greg Barnhill. And uh, our guy that we wrote our song for is Preston, and our song is called Press On Preston. Cool. But you'll be hearing more about that. Excellent. I just want to put that word in there for you. That'll be up on your website. On your it website. will, so definitely. It's such a good project. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, now it's time in the show where okay. you're probably wondering why this hideous thing is uh, sitting on the table. It's not just to look pretty. Has it got candy in it? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but what it does, this is called Asked and Answered. So our oh, viewers okay. around the world. Uh, have sent in questions. Really? And, I love this. And so okay. just reach your hand in there and mess things up a little bit and grab one. Okay. If you have a question you'd like to ask of our artist, just send, uh, send us a private message uh, through Facebook and uh, we'll put it in Dan's ugly cookie chart. I'm so excited. Cool. <laughs> I love stuff like this. Excellent. Okay. What you got? All right. What's the scariest thing you've ever done? Who's that from? 
that's from Elaine in London. Elaine in London. Elaine, oh my gosh, probably one of the scariest things I ever did was jump out of an airplane. <laughs> I did that. I was wow. nominated for the Horizon Award, yeah. and they called me up and said, Deborah, we would like to get some footage of you doing something kind of normal. You know, maybe like cooking in your kitchen. I said, well, that wouldn't be very normal for me because I'm a horrible cook. In fact, I wound up writing a song with my good friend Paul Overstreet called I Don't Do My Cooking in the Kitchen. <laughs> but, um, Paul's a great writer. He is. I love Paul. Yeah. And I wrote the song I sang for you. I wrote it with my good oh, friend was... Curtis Wright. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, scariest thing I've ever done was jump out of that airplane. So I said, I'll tell you what, since it's the Horizon Award, how about if I'm jumping out into the horizon? Because my mother always wanted to skydive, and I thought I'll kind of do, I'll live out that part of her bucket list nice. for her, you know. So well, uh, that was pretty idea. scary, pretty scary. I, but I did it. I knew a guy in high school that did it. He jumped out. Of, he had learned in the morning and jumped in the afternoon. Yeah, that's and, what I did. And he broke his leg so badly it had eleven. He had a plate put in with eleven screws in it to hold his leg together. So no. Not doing that. I'm so glad that I did it once, Elaine, but I think once is enough for me because, like uh, Roger Miller said, why would anybody jump out of a perfectly good airplane? <laughs> However, the late George Bush kept jumping into his 80s. So. Well, maybe I should take after George then. But you have to be insane to be president, too. But so. I like all my brothers <laughs> this year. Hey, do we get to draw another one? Yeah, you it? just get one. Oh, Sorry, shoot. we have a quota. Okay. <laughs> Here Thanks for the question, You're Elaine. Welcome. If you Thank have you, a question, Elaine. again, please send us a private message. We'll stick it into Nana's ugly cookie jar. And one day, a famous celebrity will be reading your question. Um, I, I typically ask a question of my rising artists, okay. by the way. So I'm going to ask something a little bit different. Okay. Of, of all the people in the world that are talented artists out there, mm -hmm. who would you most likely or most want to do a duet with? That you haven't it's done so funny. I get a lot of that. I get a lot of that. There's so many wonderful people. Come. And I've done some duets with great people yeah. like Jim Reeves, George Jones. You know, I worked with Prince. That wasn't a duet, but that was great. But as far as um, great artists, well, of course, I love Paul McCartney and I love Stevie Wonder and I love that Aretha Franklin's no longer with us. But in country music, my favorite female that I think would be fun to do something with is Miranda. I love Miranda Lambert. I've said it many times. She's a, a you know, she's, we've kind of become friends throughout the years a little bit, but I don't think she realizes how um, much love and respect I have for her because even back when she did the, the National Star and right. all that, yeah. that's when I went, I love her. She's great, and a lot of that's just because she's feisty and she's a great songwriter, and she sings great. So that'd be fun. So Miranda, if you're watching, uh, get together and do a duet. Let's with, do it with Deborah here. Thank you so much for being on the show. Well, remind people again, the latest album here is called "Hear Me Now." Deborah Allen, get it uh, the, for Christmas because it's coming really soon. Rockin' Little Christmas, always a, a favorite. Thank you. And. The Loneliest Christmas Tree, written by Deborah Allen, and illustrations by Molly Brooks, Kicks Brooks. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's pretty special. So Thank all you. of those things, get them to go to your website and, and get them there. Because Absolutely. then you get to keep more of the money than anybody else. Well, on top of that, I'm not kidding you. You know, I can, I can have a touch. stack of them, but I love to just sign them and, and get them out there. It's so much fun. And... Just want to thank you again thank so you. much. It, it's such a pleasure and an honor to have you here. Well, it's a pleasure I, and an honor. We'll frame the couch now because <laughs> <laughs> you've graced it. I'll do my banner white move. All right. Thank, uh, let's say this. Thanks for watching National Meets World. Camo, Deborah Allen. Uh, make sure you check her out on all our socials. And make sure you catch me every Sunday at noon. Uh, following the Bobby Bones show on Chris Country All right. across the UK, and That's super cool. Thursday mornings with Jody Crosby and John Wolf on 88.9 Tamworth Radio in Tamworth, New South Wales, Australia. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Tamworth.